Most folks have no idea what's going on with the whole Jesus flipping tables thing. You're selling ministry t-shirts? You're offering coffee in the church foyer? You have a bookstore attached to your church? Jesus is going to flip your tables. I mean, you pretty much go on any Christian post on TikTok and you'll find someone in the comments somewhere going, Oh, come on! Jesus is going to flip these tables! And I get it. I see loads of people charging $300 for a prophetic word, and I'm not saying that's right. But the whole Jesus flipping tables thing is often taken out of context to try to make a person feel like their righteous anger is justified. In fact, it's you who might need to get your tables flipped. The Jesus flipping tables thing is deeper than you think, at least in its true cultural and historic context. So let's dive in. Temple of Jerusalem in Jesus's day was the center of Hebraic life. All Jews were required to make a pilgrimage to Jerusalem three times a year, in spring for Passover, summer for Feast of Weeks, and the fall for Tabernacles. Herod had built the Temple of Jerusalem into a wonder of the ancient world, and it was visible for miles around. And the focal part of the temple was the Holy of Holies, and only the high priest was allowed in this space one day a year to make atonement for the sins of the people. The floor, ceiling, and walls were plated with gold, and a giant veil separated this portion of the temple from its secondary portion. And that veil was a blue, scarlet, and purple, heavily embroidered curtain over four inches thick, 60 feet high, 30 feet wide, and embroidered on the veil were all the things that were mystical in the heavens, according to Josephus. That's the curtain that was torn top to bottom at the death of Jesus on the cross. Inside the rest of the temple proper, things were set similarly to Moses' tabernacle, a golden altar of incense, a golden table of showbread, and a golden lampstand. Only the priest on duty was allowed to enter that area. Outside the temple were the courts of the priests, where only priests were allowed and where they offered sacrifice, and it was cordoned off by a low balustrade. Next area was for ceremonial clean Jewish men, called the Court of Israel. And the area outside of that, through the Nicanor Gate, was the Court of the Women. Women were not allowed to go past this point, and this court was where people could make voluntary offerings. Now, and here we go, the next area was called the Court of the Gentiles. And this is where non-Jewish people could come to worship or pray homage to the Israelite God. But Gentiles were not allowed to go past this point. If they did, the penalty was death. And it was here in this place that the Jewish priests had allowed businesses to be set up. And Jesus, when he saw it, got a little lot ticked for a few reasons. Was it because things were being sold on temple grounds? Not really. Shocker, I know, but that's not it. The first reason was what they were selling in the temple. They were selling animals for sacrifice at exorbitant rates. Jewish religion required sacrifice, so when you came on pilgrimage, you made sacrifice for atonement. But instead of people bringing something that they had raised and cared for, they would just show up and buy whatever they needed for sacrifice, kind of making a mockery of the whole sacrificial system. And the businessmen and priests were taking advantage because the priesthood was getting a cut of this money for allowing these businesses to set up shop within the temple. But what really sent Jesus over the edge, and here's the biggie, and it will pull everything together. Remember what I said about the temple representing Jewish life? It also represented the hierarchical social status of the Hebraic world. At the center were the priests, radiating out were ceremonial clean Jewish men, then women and unclean men, and then the Gentiles. The closer you were to the center, the Holy of Holies, the more special you were. And on the fringes, the ragged edge of all this, were the Gentiles, basically everybody except Jews. In a nutshell, the top of the social ladder was saying that it was okay to crowd out people at the bottom and exchange their money with the faces of pagans for Tyrian shekels and extract a high exchange rate and sell sacrificial animals at exorbitant rates. This was nasty mafia type stuff perpetrated by the temple overseers. But so what? Because to them, the Gentiles weren't included in God's covenant. So who cared? Jesus cared. This is the thing. Gentiles knew how the priesthood felt about them, but they still came to this place to pray to Israel's God. They weren't subject to the law, but they still came to pay homage to God and worship. And this was the one part of the temple they were allowed to come to get close to the presence of Yahweh. And as close as they believed they could get to it on earth, for to go any closer was subject to capital punishment. And this area of the temple had been designed for them, but they couldn't even pray over the sounds and the commotions around them. But worse, the very priesthood that was supposed to reveal God to the people were making it more difficult for the people to access Him. Hence the reason why Jesus said, Is it not written, My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations? 
but you've made it a den of robbers. That's Mark 11, 17. Jesus got mad because the very place and priesthood that was supposed to represent God was making it more difficult for people to be near his presence. And not just that, but the systems that were supposed to free people were pushing the people into deeper oppression. And that is what flipping tables is all about. So are you making it easier for people to experience the love of God? Or are you making them jump through hoops, looking down your nose at them, crowding them out, or deepening their oppression? If you are, then maybe you need to get your tables flipped. Just a thought. Click the pen videos for more.